like little kids. I got my little army. And we never outgrow it. We just take it to a higher level with nuclear bombs. 2 Timothy 2, verses 3 and 4. You therefore endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that wars entangles himself in the affairs of this life, they may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. You know what part of our problem is? We don't want to endure hardship. I got a solution for this. Where Paul says, endure hardship. This is tough. We are talking about something here. The, the real struggle is an internal one. We don't want to deal with the internal struggle. We don't want to endure hardship. And that's what he's saying, that to advance the kingdom, there are going to be hardships. That's what a good soldier of Jesus Christ is about, is enduring some things that you don't like, that shouldn't be, quite frankly. They just shouldn't be. By the end of this morning, we'll see why they are the way they are as well. I'm going to continue with Paul in Romans 14, 17. There are tons and tons of scriptures I'm doing very, very few, and it's not to, not to present a certain case, it's because there's just too many to cover. If you really want to, you know, look up kingdom scriptures and, and things like that, the reason why I'm taking two weeks to get into this subject, next week, uh, basically, the question is, are we called to nonviolence? And that's what we're going to spend the whole week on next week. Today, I'm still trying to tie together the kingdom with Jesus saying the nature of the kingdom is not fighting, in three weeks, carry that thing sort of through. So in Romans 14, 17, it's a place that gives us a really good example, a really good scripture about the kingdom of God itself. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. In, that, in Romans 14, what Paul is dealing with, our people are having a go at each other because of what they eat and drink, over what they celebrate. The emphasis of what Paul is saying, the kingdom of God is not food and drink, what you eat. It's righteousness, peace, and joy. So he's got a group of people that would argue about whether you should drink or whether you shouldn't drink. About whether you should eat this or eat that. Whether you should celebrate your birthday and your anniversary or not. And Paul's like saying, don't you get it? That's all stuff of earth, they're like earthly kingdoms. It has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. Here's what has to do with the kingdom of God. Let me share with you, righteousness. Your goal as a Christian should be to maintain right relationships at all costs. Who gives a rip, God certainly doesn't, what you eat or drink. You should not be making that an issue and end up having division with a brother. If one, Paul says it, if one person is convinced of that, bless them. If you're convinced of another, bless them. So now what do I do? Eh, don't, don't eat or drink what you were going to eat or drink. What? Are you kidding me? I know there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, you know what there's something wrong with? Your flipping attitude. That's what there's something wrong with. That you would make food and drink divisive among your brother or sister. How are you going to keep right relationships when food, drink, what they celebrate becomes issues? Righteousness, peace. You feel the peace within yourself? You're like agitating. You get like this. My peace is all messed up. And here's the deal with peace. If you're messed up in your heart, you will mess up people around you. It kind of works that way. So until we get a peace in our hearts about I am not holding anything against any brother, I will do everything and anything to keep the peace. Because the kingdom of God, there's an order that God has established that we're supposed to enjoy as the family of God, that means peace, within, without. And the joy in the Holy Ghost doesn't mean dancing around on a Sunday morning. The joy is talking about having a delight and a content within yourself. A calm delight is what the word actually means, joy, in the spirit. In other words, once you've settled all these things in your heart, and you can sit at the table with somebody else who's eating and drinking something you don't agree with, just get on with it. What Paul's really trying to say to them is stop judging one another. Because every place there's judgment, there's division, there's separation. Stop causing, putting back up the wall of partition that Jesus pulled down. Why do you want a wall? It had more to do with you go to a market and the guy has prayed over a cow. And he's uh, some kind of a pagan, heathen, whatever. And they were like, oh, you shouldn't eat it because that meat he prayed over. It's like, well, give it to me. I'll fry that baby up. Because I don't, there's nothing in there 
There's still no demons in that meat, I'm telling you. And other people were saying, but you can't eat that. That was offered to idols. Mm. And now the people who know better, Paul is saying, for crying out loud, you know better. And there's a higher virtue at stake here than whether you eat the meat or not. There's a higher virtue. When you don't eat the meat, and you've told you know, people look and they go, oh my goodness, what are you trying? I'm trying to keep us together. If it really bothers you, I won't do it. I do this with wine a lot. If I go someplace, and I drink wine. If I thought it was going to bother somebody and put them in a compromised position, I wouldn't drink it. Is there anything wrong with wine? Absolutely not. Drunkenness, yes, is clear. You know. But if someone says, I'm not going to drink wine because in the Proverbs it says, you know, you drink the wine and you know, and you get a little goofy. You know, if there's things that people, oh, God bless them, that's great, good. And I won't, I just don't need it. God doesn't want it. You get on with it. Why? Because that's the kingdom of God. I'm maintaining the peace, and inside myself, I'm feeling pretty good. Because I am maintaining a nature of God that he desires for us to enjoy. I feel pretty good about that. Paul says that's kind of where we're at as a people. That's what the kingdom of God is about. There comes a point, and Jesus inferred the same thing about teaching, throwing, casting pearls to swine. Okay. There is, you know, and to dogs, you know, they, they'll turn around and they bite you. There are, there's a discernment that's involved. You go so far. Does that mean you don't talk anymore? Only the Spirit of God can tell you that. The Spirit is the one who leads us. You know, the kingdom of God, righteousness, peace, and joy, love, and truth are the two qu biggest qualities of the kingdom of God is love and truth. And the Holy Spirit leads and guides us into truth. And there comes a point when, whether it's somebody we're, you know, trying to minister to, whatever, it's not us. In fact, to be honest with you, I almost feel like I want to keep going. Mm -hmm. And God says, now, just release them to me. Paul does that with a guy at the Corinthian church. Anyway, he's carrying on inappropriately, openly in the church. Paul tries to bring correction. Guy's not having it. Paul says, your history. Throws him out. Turns him over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, he calls it. The guy comes scampering back, wants forgiveness, you know, that whole thing. There are reasons to release people, and Paul makes it clear. Paul knows if he says to the, the church, listen, you know, the guy's got issues, you know, he's got problems, he's been to four counselors, he's on Prozac, you know, he goes on and on and on about this thing. And all the people are hearing is, oh, so that makes it okay then. Mm -hmm. And Paul knows, Paul is wise enough to know that the kingdom of God is much greater than the kingdoms of this world. And once he has to go out there and walk apart from his kingdom brothers and sisters, it is going to be painful. Paul knows that. And he says that when the guy returns. I knew, I knew he'd be coming back. And now you need to restore him. He's so sorry for what he did. But it's a good, it's a good picture of two kingdoms, actually. And the one that Paul was you know, speaking about. The kingdom is spiritual. The kingdom is Trinitarian. In other words, when we look at righteousness, peace, and joy, the Father, Son, and the Spirit, we can see those things working together in love and truth. And Paul is saying, whatever you have to do to maintain the unity, it's what consumed Jesus. We know this in John 17, his last prayer. It was consuming him that they may be one, that they may be one. Oh God, don't let food and drink and rules and regulations and when you worship and where you worship. and Oh God, don't let this divide them. And yet, you know, we sit here 2,000 years later. We're not sitting here playing the blame-shame game. We just we have actual facts of looking at the church, what it looks like and why. And it's not very nice when we look, when we compare it to the early church, Jesus' prayer, Paul's comments. It's just not a very well-kept kingdom on our part. Because like I said earlier, we're talking about violence is not. Jesus said, you know, my kingdom is not violent. It's not the nature of the kingdom of God, violence, which ultimately leads to war. But in Galatians 5, verses 19 through 21, Paul lists 17 works of the flesh. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of it, he says, and the like. So he's saying, this is not a complete list. You guys can probably think of a few more, but that's the way he lists them. Uh, Mark, would you read verses 20 and 21 in Galatians 5? Okay. Idolatry, sorcery, Hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies. 
envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, he, he, you know, it's, it's interesting in his lists and stuff like that. Contention just means quarreling. Think, think of it this way. If quarreling puts you in a position of not inheriting the kingdom of God, where do you think serious violence and war puts us? For those who think, well, you know, you just you have to go to war, you have to do all this kind of stuff. Well, you can, you can buy that lie if you want to. But here's the truth. You cannot, will not be able to walk in the kingdom of God with that. You cannot inherit the kingdom of God with that. These things are works of the flesh. The kingdoms of this world depend on our works of the flesh. The enemy depends, and there is an enemy, principalities and powers. They exist, and they depend on us actually believing that the best way forward is through the lusts of the flesh. That's the way you do it. He's, they've sold us this thing. We've been great at the early church wasn't which makes it kind of interesting. Because we don't, you know, we love talking about the early church, but then we can give you a zillion reasons why, well, we're not the early church anymore, and we've grown, and we've evolved, and we've developed, and now we've got, you know, and it's like, really? It's a problem that sometimes comes in my direction. because You do what? You meet in your home? That's not church. And I don't have the heart <laughs> to tell them, actually, what you're doing is not church. If you want to go down that road, building, building, and stuffing people in there once a week, Actually, that's not church. That developed after Christianity became the Church of Rome. At that point, they started building, built. You, know, it, there's, you can look at these things historically. Is there any virtue to it? No, because all it continues to do is divide. And Paul says, just get out of it, relax. Keep the righteousness, peace, and joy. Don't argue with them. Don't argue with anybody for that matter. You don't, you don't need to go down that road all I want to say is that if contentions, which is one of the things he lists, that's why I started, if contentions, Paul says you won't inherit the kingdom of God, just think about it. The level of violence that we practice in America and in the Western world to the point of war, where does it put that? We'll talk about that next week. Don't get mad at me yet. Don't try and stone me because I'm going to be just presenting stuff. I'm not even trying to build a case. All I'm going to do is pose tons of questions that we all need to kind of, between the Bible and the Spirit and everything else, we, we need to sort of answer and then determine, so where am I in this thing? Where is God in this thing? Why am I here in this thing? <laughs>